Keith K here. I'm doing a, vid uh, a video here this morning that's a little different than what I've done in the past. I'm usually out metal detecting. But this is a, a request by another YouTuber who has done some of the same kind of videos. And I'm talking about a young lady named Tracking Treasures. I have subscribed to her um, and over the year uh, this lady is, is out there detecting and um, <clears throat> she's at the bottle dumps she's uh, in the fields <clears throat> and then sometimes she brings you into her home and she goes over a few other things that she has and some of those things are World War II um, just different things that she has found in, in relation to that sort of history, World War II. I told her in one of the videos that I had some of the same ration books and she'd ask uh, if I could uh, it, possibly do a video and, and show some of the things I have. I want to just say, uh, first of all, I'll try to make this short, but I just want to say um, my wife, uh, her dad, was in the Normandy invasion. I think he landed on D plus three, um, which meant that he was in the 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 third day. Uh, people who came abo uh, came on shore, and he went through Europe. Um, and he's a decorated war veteran. In uh, he passed away as a, uh, as a young man at 58 years old. Of all things, he's out exercising, riding a bike, and uh, a young lady didn't see him coming. And um, anyhow, it's a, it's a sad story, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that the the Luger that you're going to see, the canteen, <coughs> and that awesome uh, camera over there, those were her dad's. The other finds actually were found in a box in an old home, and uh, it, it was in an abandoned home, uh, or, or an abandoned, uh, uh, anyhow, <laughs> let's get to the story. Stand by, let's review some of the other things first. One of the first things that uh, I have done here, and, I, and this is either related World War I or World War II, but these are eye shields anti-gas uh, I don't know if you can see that but um, gas uh, in both wars was um, you know something to be reckoned with uh, and I guess these things were passed out and somebody put them away in a box and saved them but hopefully you know, nobody ever had to use these sort of things uh, to protect themselves Another thing is this. Um, this is a cover, and it's against sprayed blister gases. Uh, honestly, wow. It's scary shit, man, I'll tell you. Um, thank God nobody had to open that and use that. Um, what a shame. Um, but I'm trying to give you a close-up and trying to make uh, you know, sense of it all. And then finally, uh, what I have is a, a shell dressing. Again, unopened, but it's a dressing that was available to people at time of war. I want to review the two Coke bottles because the interesting find was the person had actually saved the lids, the cork lids, and I'll show it to you. Um, I guess all, uh, you know, all bottles came with, you know, the, the cork inside back in those days. It was protectant against the, the actual metal of the lid. I guess it protected the taste. One of the first Coke bottles is a place called urban Virginia um, and I don't know <clears throat> I, I'm not sure how coke described their bottles whenever or where they were 
refilled at or made at but here's another one that says Easton Maryland Easton Maryland so two very old coke bottles and some caps the <laughs> actual uh, let's see if we can get a it says US property made by those people in 1943 very cool canteen a couple of small little American flags this particular handbook and I wish I could open t uh, and, and show you a lot of it but um, it was a uh, a way to have a conversation in uh, it's French German combined so you would be able to see the pronunciation of different things um, some some of it has phrases in it uh, this is a very cool book um, this may have been brought over by uh, my wife's father uh, I'm thinking that it was uh, very relative to the time anybody knows what these sticks are uh, they're clack some sort of clackers I know that but if anybody knows and then I want to show you this I'm not sure what this tool is I know it was uh, this fellow here and it's some sort of a sliding rule uh, the, the writing is very small on it but this all slides on and there's a patent date on it of um, let me try to get it to slide <laughs> There's a patent date of 1990, so here we go. I'm sorry, people. <laughs> I'll pull it out first. There you go. Anyhow, some sort of a ruler and all kinds of markings on it. I, I, I don't know very much about this type of thing, but anyhow. And now let's go ahead and show the, uh, <clears throat> the ration books. There are ration books uh, number one, ration books number three, and ration books number four. I need to do some research and find out really what they were all about. Um, I guess they rationed products, and uh, it's hard to believe, but uh, you know, wow. Um, here's here's something that caught my eye also. A sugar purchase certificate. I guess if you wanted sugar back in the the war era, you had to purchase it and you got a certificate. I guess you were only able to get so much sugar. In ration book number one, there's always a couple of stamps in, in most of these books. And I'll try to open it and show you. Now this book didn't have any stamp, but this book they did and there it is over there number 20 and number 19 okay and let's go to this one these are all dated in 1944-45 I'm not sure but anyhow number 20 and number 19 the, uh, the person's age was already on there um, okay height, weight, color eyes, age Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at another one. Number 20 and number 19. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that was, that people didn't want it, I guess. I don't know. But there's a person's 38 years old. Um, <clears throat> in the number three and four books, uh, there's a lot of stamps, and um, maybe a lot have been used, I'm not sure. But I don't know what all these stamps were for. I do know one thing. There it is. A ration stamp. And these are tanks. Little stamps from the tanks. The same way in, in, in the book four. Uh, 
And let's read this United States of America Office of Price Administration. Well, oh. <laughs> and let's look at the thing. These were colorful stamps. You know, uh, this page had a lot used on it, the red stamps. Then the next page were some blue stamps and green stamps. I wish I knew more about it. Um, and here's something that's pretty neat too, and that is the folder. I mean, they had a folder to keep the ration books in, and uh, the folder was well cared for. Yeah. And it keeps your ration books clean and neat. Okay. Now I just want to talk a couple minutes about <clears throat> two more things. This camera. This camera was brought over from Germany. And I don't know if it would still work, if it does work, uh, how to get film for it or anything like that. But it's just uh, something that um, my father-in-law had uh, brought over with him and, and kept. It had a very nice, yeah, very nice uh, container. And it's a beautiful camera, um, really. <laughs> and the final thing, and I guess most um, most war 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 veterans who were in the Second World War, this was their prizes. Um, if they could get a hold of something like that. German Luger. Um, this particular German Luger has a, some, some carvings in, in the handle. I guess it's identifiable to whoever has it. I had this Luger looked at at a gun show one time and a fella who um, was more of an expert on them told me that this was uh, an officer's weapon and the officer I don't know how he knew this but he said it was a, a machine gun uh, nest off officer the guy was in charge of a machine gun nest well my guess is he's dead <laughs> I don't want to laugh about that but uh, Joe wouldn't have uh, been able to get this any other way but what an awesome, an awesome piece to bring back with you. Okay, I know the, the video is getting late. I'm going to go and give you one more thing. And I'm opening it now so I can show it to you. And that is the documentation of bringing something home like that. Okay. And here it is here. It's the certificate of retention and customs declaration. This is dated September 10th, 1945. There's my father-in-law, Joe Glassy. And in Joe's case, <clears throat> I'm sorry this is folded, but in Joe's case he brought home one pistol and one camera. And there it was all written up um, and packed in his duffel bag because that's what it says up here, duffel bag. <laughs> Pretty cool. Not long after he was home, he took it down to the city of Pittsburgh. Um, he lived in a, in a kind of like a suburb of Pittsburgh. But anyhow, he took it to the city of Pittsburgh and November 28th, 1945. And he took it to the Department of Public Safety, Bureau of the Police, okay? And here's what it says. Joseph Glassy, dear sir, this is to certify that the following revolver was this date registered at the Pawn Division, City Detectives Division. One Luger revolver. Okay, there it is. So he registered it with the pawn division <laughs> in the city of Pittsburgh. How damn awesome is all that? Anyhow, um, 
I'll just back off here a little bit and just say uh, this man he he was a he was a war hero. He had a purple heart and he had a bronze star. And uh, those two items are very much cherished by the family. I hope that the family will always keep them available. Uh, someone have them anyhow. Somebody in the family. I'll talk to my grandson about it. Um, it would be cool. Hey, listen, thanks for watching Detecting the Bear again. Uh, I know this is not the normal vi uh, video I put up, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.